Ja. So, ich sage Cheers, come on, bye. bye. I, 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 I got a white wine today because it's still the summer. And that's well, what I'm I drink. Thinking, I'm drinking controversially with me cider. Cider, well, I'm drinking white wine and ice. What's happened to us? Where's it all going wrong? Cheers. Cheers. Anyway, no. uh, I've had a good week this week, and this week we sort of finally spoke about our uh, Shominji Kempo experience. Yeah. And it got me thinking, when I first met you, yeah. uh, one of the things that attracted me to the JKS and joining the JKS was this idea of a karate adventure. Uh -huh. And I mean, very early on when I met you, you said, oh, casually said, oh, yeah, we're going to Japan, we're going to do Kangeko. And I was like, you know, not many people do it. I mean, everyone, you know, a lot of associations go to Japan every now and again. And I was really attracted to this idea. And, you know, since then, they've had lots of karate adventures. I mean, tell us about your philosophy of karate adventures and maybe some highlights of them and what, and what, what lies in, in store in the future. Oh, well, you know what, what it is, and, and it was something that someone said to me today um, about um, me needing to find a new rival. And uh, whether it's been kind of fairly obvious or, or not obvious. Again, yeah, needing to find a new... A new rival. Oh, okay, that's so, interesting. Oh. So, uh, like... That's, I know, that's my seems, last question. <laughs> it seems a little bit of a, a tangent. But, um, you know, Simon Sinek, you know, the, uh, the, the kind of... Uh, business consultant philosophy guy talks about kind of this finite game versus infinite game. Yeah. How, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if we have a, rather than having a competitor, you don't, you don't want to have a competitor. You want to have a rival. Yeah, um, definitely. And, uh, because a rival makes, shines light on your weaknesses rather than a competitor. You're just looking for their weaknesses. Anyway, and this might seem kind of really uh, nothing to do with your question, but, but the point is, is that um, when we first, when I first moved back from Japan, I guess the rival uh, for what I was trying to build was Kato Sensei's uh, group the I, at the time, well, the IJK. And, uh, and when I was part of that group, he always took yearly trips to Japan. And I, I did one in 1992, I think it was. Yeah, 1992. And, um, and six weeks in Japan, Kind of having multiple adventures and so that was a real unique element of what the ijk had to offer and by the time i got back from japan you know a decade later 19, 2002 he'd stopped doing them he hadn't, he hadn't done them for i think possibly mine was the last year 1992 was possibly the last year that he took a trip to japan um so i was kind of lucky that i got into it and and so when i came back and started uh, set up the, uh, the JKS uh, in UK and Ireland, Jubian Island, then I really wanted to make sure that we had similar karate adventures and Kangeko was one of those things that was just the basic bog standard thing that you did in Japan, but very few people ever kind of uh, did in the UK or even knew about. So that's why I wanted to, uh, to do that because I knew that it would be a real cultural eye-opener for for the people who went um so so yeah that's that's why we decided to do that and it was a real karate adventure what was your question no so no well no i was also going to say uh, interestingly i think i think the jks guys still do it and they still stay in the kimi rayaka they still have great fruit sours so cheers to them <laughs> yeah. no, no so my, my my question is um can maybe i was going to ask you about shuinji kempo and yeah. the, the, the i mean i mean Let's talk about that for a second, because that was just fantastic, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think, well, I mean, like, so over the years, I mean, so it's like the first year that we went to, to do that, uh, Kangeko, what well, the, the JKS guys are still kind of doing, was 2004, right? So for 16 years, like, like the same trip year after year. And like, the, obviously, the last trip that I did uh, was in, uh, I guess, 2013 for the JKS, with the JKS, and we did we did Kangeko or something, but like by that point, it was just getting, it was just getting old, you know. Yeah, was, I mean, from my point of view, I did Kangeko once, which was great. Yeah. I did the Okinawa World Championship trip, which was great. Yeah. But it's not the sort of thing I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't pay the money to do Kangeko again and again and again. Yeah, Whereas and it was now our chips are, our, our, every chip's different, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, so that, that, yeah, I mean, the thing is, is that like we we initially started going to the Kangeko was because because unless I took them 
no one could really go. Whereas now yeah. we open that door and then anyone can go. You don't have to, you don't have to organize a trip to go to Japan and do Kangeko. If you're a JKS member, you just go. But, yeah. but yeah. like, uh, you know, there's no, you don't need any special kind of... Uh, they do seminar, they do international seminars. Now. Yeah, yeah. So you just go, right? So yeah. but even when we were JKS, by the end of the JKS years, we were starting to mix things up a little bit. Yeah, we went to, I mean, uh, well, you went to Okinawa in 2007 with us. I went to, I went to Tam on Census, don't you? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, also I, we trained with, um, who was the guy with all the fish, the great guy? Uh, Yagi Sensei. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. He did a whole yeah, thing. So we still, I, you know, we still, we, I mean, I look back on those days very, very, very fondly. They were great. Yeah. But, it, you know? but what, what my point is, is that we were, we were starting to, uh, to kind of, like so, two thousand and seven was the first year that we didn't do Kangeko, and we went somewhere else. And that was the that was uh, the um, the the World Championships in in uh, in Okinawa. I, I did that one. We changed yeah. Tsuyama Sensei. Yeah, and and also we went to Tamon Sensei's uh, Pemba, Pemba Tamon Sensei's dojo, which I got into a lot of trouble for. Yeah, I love that though. I mean, yeah. that was fantastic. That was, yeah. that was the start of the end, I think. But like one point from like two thousand seven until two thousand thirteen. Who was in trouble? Was, uh huh. You're always in trouble. Yeah, uh, but like we were, all, we were starting to do different things, weren't we? Just to kind of mix things. Well, you, up. you found Senaha Center, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, and stuff, stuff like that. So, so um, I think, I think like now that we kind of got a free reign, also now that we we can't go to the JKS anyway. But but like uh, you know now that we got free reign, so we got just looking for anything and and anything that's interesting. And so obviously the last trip in February was uh, the. Shorinji Kempo guys, which were beyond amazing. Yeah, and, uh, I think, you know, from, from my point, since, since the sort of, you know, the, this undoubted quality of, you know, the JKS dojo is fantastic and the trainings there's, you know, good quality. Yeah. And, you know, the other chefs, we've met all sorts of inspiring people. But the, going to the Shorinji Kempo one, it was back to that quality again, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, like I remember saying to you, like, I remember coming out of the training session and saying to you, I want to learn everything I, I can about Shorinji Kempo. Yeah, well, me too. That's what I've been reading up and posting about it. Yeah. 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 And they were, they were just like, I, I remember the, the, the young, uh, the young lads who, who took us. I mean, they went that, well, there was probably late twenties. I, mean, I think they were fifth down, fourth down and third down. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And they were so genki. They were so kind yeah, yeah. of like happy yeah. and full of energy and, and super genki and and solid like, like i remember looking at because you know you look take so it takes someone into account and they have those kind of very big robes on so yeah. you can't they look fit but then the i looked at the, around the tummies yeah but i looked at the i looked at their feet and I, yeah. and I thought i hadn't seen feet like that since the days of the instructor's course yeah they were like just muscle bound feet you, you know yeah. what i mean <laughs> and i thought i thought these guys are going to be good because oh. anybody who's got that stronger foot Kind of, is going to be kind of really well trained. And also, they, you know, they, they, they live in Shikoku, and the, yeah. there was like, in the town there was nothing to do there. There's no distractions, is there? It's not Tokyo. There's no nightlife. But I presume, I presume they're they're taken in from anywhere over Japan, oh, right? Japan, yeah, yeah. They're called Kenshi. That's the thing I, yeah. I look for. They're, they're, you know, they, they they are basically they come to the headquarters and train full time, and part of the they're, they're, they're like Kenshi, you say. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, but like, they, I mean, they didn't have a swagger about them, did they? There was no, no arrogance about them. No, no, they were they were they were the real deal. They were like super super talented, but super humble. And yeah. uh, and I, I, it was a pleasure. It was a it was a real it was a real kind of uh, kind of gave you faith in martial arts all over again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not that I'd lost faith. But no. I'd lost faith. But it it, it kind of reestablished or re reconfirmed that idea that. Yeah, what we do is right and good and proper, and it can produce strong, talented, humble people. So yeah, I was I, I was overwhelmed by them. Yeah, they were also very open. You know, like you know, previous yeah. trips to Japan, we've had people going, "Oh, that's very good and all wrong," or you yeah. know, I mean, they obviously like you know, they obviously you can have a dialogue with them and that clip of you talk to them. You know, they, they, they get it. They're really respectful. Yeah. There's, you yeah. know, there, there, it wasn't like it's, it's Shuinji Kempo or no way at all. Yeah. You know, they were, yeah. And also, you know, as, as a group, they liked our group as well, which I yeah. was, again, in Japan, it's very easy for people to go, oh, dame, dame. Oh, you know. yeah. They were very positive. Yeah. So that was a great 
So in terms of, I mean, you know, so your philosophy of adventures is just following on from Catosense's idea, or is it more than that? Um, well, I don't, know, I don't know if Catosense, I was, well, I was going to say, I don't know if Catosense was, was had that idea that he, we were having a crazy adventure. It was just, it was just adventurous because you were in the company of Katosensei and it was always kind of fly by the seat of your pants type yeah. of experience. Uh, I mean, that, that's, that's maybe being a little bit unfair to him, but, but certainly he was just doing what he wanted and you better keep up, you know what I mean? Uh, whereas whereas um, like I, from a Western point of view or from like, I kind of try to figure out, well, what's, what's accessible, what's easily doable within a group? And, uh, and and what hasn't been done before, and so yeah, so the Shorinji Kempo, and thank you for to Mark in in Shikoku. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, I think I think you know, I'd love to go back one day. Yeah, well, we will. I, I mean, I think, I'd, like, I'd Mark... like to say, I'd like to say to the young guys back, Rue and Ross, and you know, yeah. all, all the young, young the young guns, as I call it. Yeah, it would. It would I'd love to see them there. I would yeah. absolutely love to see them. There. Absolutely, yeah. So um, I think, like moving forward, definitely we're going to go back to the Shirenji Kempo, but presuming yeah. that it'll be okay. But the, like they were really, they really liked us and and, and welcomed yeah. us back. So that almost said they welcomed us back. So that's great. Um, also, I, th I just think like those those uh, those provincial dojos um, and you know Shotokan dojos as well. I think they they have something to offer as well. And like you know, you'll you'll have the kind of the JK JKS kind of pure saying. Unless it's at the Hombo Dojo, then, then uh, you know, what's the point? And like, I, you know, they, they, they have a point. And you know, going to the Hombo Dojo of whatever organization, you, like Japanese-based organization you're in, has that certain kind of intensity. But like, you know, we train hard as well. We like, we, we have, you know, we have our intensity in our Hombo Dojo. And uh, and I, I defy anybody to say that you have to be in Japan to get that intensity. I don't think that's true at all. So, yeah, well, you see, I mean, I, I also think it's like more of the same. I mean, when I was at Marshall Street, somebody said to me when I, when I knew I was going to Japan, yeah. in the nicest possible way, they said, you know, we train, we train properly here as well. Yeah. You know, and, and, and they were right. And yeah. I, I, I think, you know, sometimes, you know, a lot of martial arts organizations, it's always set in stone. I mean, I was always a bit bored. It was, a, it was the course the same year, same year, same instructors, same, same, same. Hmm. Not very interesting, you know. And yeah. I remember when, you know, when the, when, when the split happened, suddenly Asai Sensei turned up with Yamaguchi Senior and Yahara and people yeah. in Kagawa, Arimoto up in York. Yeah. And I was at, you know, I was at the wonderful, wonderful Crystal Palace course, but it was the same, same people. Yeah. And it's suddenly, it's a bit like, I've always liked that sort of, you know, on all the big organizations have the same thing, go and train yeah. at the Hombu, you go yeah. and train. And, you know, I think it's great to have that excitement and variety. And Honda Sensei's dojo in Kawasaki, that was great, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think, I think, like, like I see the clips and I see the posts and, and people, you know, go to Japan and, and they'll go to the JK Honda, the JKS, or wherever, wherever it is. Yeah. And they'll have clips of, uh, of, some, uh, of some of the Japanese instructors, like more the junior ones, doing yeah. kind of incredible things fast rapid punches or amazing kicks or um, and isn't this wonderful but karate is not a spectator sport <laughs> you know so no but it is scott sent it is that's where you've gone wrong but but like to 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 go that's amazing well yeah it is amazing but like just because you're there it doesn't bestow any of that amazingness onto you so no. like, it I'm, inspires you which is good yeah, and I'm not saying that they're, they're, they're then not learning something, but, but I, I just think that can be quite repetitive. And we, like I lived in Japan and then we, every year for, you know, 12, 10 years, I, I went back to Japan and took trips back to Japan. And, and by the end of it, it the re, well, one of the reasons why I started in the last four, five, six years were looking for different things because it was so repetitive. Yeah, uh, and, you and we were get, yeah, don't you? It had to be more. There had to be more. There had to be karate adventures. I mean, just for my own sanity, let alone anybody else who was, who was paying decent money to go. So, yeah. I just remembered, you know, I read when I was in your house last time, is it The Sporting Gene, the book was called? Yeah. yeah. Great line in that. It said something like in 1960s America, there were more amateur sports clubs than anything else. You know, so people played, people, more people played basketball, little league baseball stuff. And then finally, they, they sort of started watching it on, on TV. Yeah, and participation in like sports went right down, 
because normal people stop doing low level happy happy baseball happy yeah. basketball yeah. and they started and they started watching sitting on the sofa drinking beer watching pro football and pro stuff uh, I, I think there's a danger in all athletic activity of becoming a spectator a spectator sport like you say yeah 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 you know, and I, I think karate is managed. You know, we, we know we are. You know, we have to be about grassroots karate and giving people, you know, a karate adventure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, so there we go. So moving forward, I hope that we will continue to have karate adventures, which of One course, other point, which is a sort of a double-edged sword. It's a sign of uh, your success. Is that <laughs> the same people want to come back all the time? I know it's getting a bit top-heavy, isn't it? It's getting a bit a club. A little bit like you know, you, you can't come five. <laughs> yeah, I know we have to give other people a chance because there is yeah, a there is there has we'll to have be a lottery. Lottery. We'll have to yeah. Have a lottery. Yeah. lottery, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Well, so we'll uh, we'll 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 see what happens next year when we when I start organising it. We'll but see, just yeah. to satisfy all the people who who commented, I think I think a return to Shrinji Campo is essential, and I think a return to Honda Honda Sensei's Dojo is also yeah essential. yeah. Because well, I think we've made some good friends there. and, and, uh, and I think we have a home there. You know, Takanoshi yeah. Sensei is such a great guy. And Honda yeah. Sensei, you know, and, and having that link to sort of what was Seda Karate is quite interesting. Yeah. Too. yeah. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Then do you have a question? I do. Yeah. So um, on on Wednesday, we both did the, um, the oh. Rick Jackson Sensei meditation seminar. Yes. Uh, well, it's not a seminar, is it? So he's doing these these uh, twice monthly uh, Wednesday evening kind of uh, Sazen meditation sessions, which are uh, breathtakingly good, aren't they? They are amazing. Yes, I mean, uh, yes, yes. So, uh, so this this last week just gone, he was talking about um, uh, you know this sense of neutrality or being in neutral, mm. uh, neither here nor there, neither that that nor this. Uh, and he was he was mentioning a philosopher, I think he, it was Hung Po or something. Oh, Hung Po. Hung Po. Uh, and I thought, I bet Simon Sensei knows something about that. Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. I, I, I do a little bit. So, yeah. well, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to put you on the spot too much. But so, but no, I don't mind being put on the spot. I've got a um, theory about it. I just wanted to talk about that a bit. And also that sense of neutrality, which I, which I thought was amazing. So simple. But also... Yeah. What he said was really, truly amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 my, my phrase I've come up with is karate on a cushion. Yeah. Kind of thing. That's what we're kind of doing. And because, you know, he's, he's not a Roshi, he's not a Buddhist master, but he's a karate sensei bringing elements of karate. In. So the whole neutrality thing was excellent because mm. it, it was, it sits, sits so well with karate, you know, get that, you know, that ping, ping, ping of techniques and then back to normal yeah. resetting. And also, there's that element of Mu. Now, you know, Mu is a Zen Cohen, and like, you know, what is Mu is neither yes nor yeah, neither yes nor no. Mm. It's like somewhere in between. So, I mean, I wanted to ask Rick about this in, in regards to Hong Po because I think Hong Po's neutrality is different because it, Hong Po's neutrality is no is formlessness or emptiness, which brings us back to karate, which is quite hard for me to talk about. So, yeah, because there are there are no there are I've got some notes somewhere and I'm have to look at my notes for this. So <laughs> I, I made some notes about it, but there are it, it's no thing. Now let me put my glasses on because I always take notes on Rick's glasses. Give me a second. No, I haven't got them. Oh, have I got them here? No, I'm I haven't got them here. I'm I've got, got no. So anyway, so I. I'm I just, I just want to say that I'm glad that people can see that these are totally unplanned, these conversations. Yeah, well, well no, well, no, only, no literally, because I, Paul, Paul, I, I wrote up about Rick's thing. I, I always yeah. take notes with Rick's sets of talks. So, um, okay, let me try and I'll stop walking for a second. So, I'll have to talk about emptiness again next week. We need a bit of time to talk about okay. Emptiness and karate are really important. So, um, but let's let's go back for but go back to Mu and yeah. say put it in terms of Mu, it, it's a neither yes or no situation. So yeah. it's like in terms of, of 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 being neutral but ready to so Mu Shin, no mind. So, yeah, oh that's not a very good answer, is it really? 
<laughs> I'll tell you what, like, he was talking about, because I, I, because I was on holiday, yeah. um, I missed, because this is, I think it's his fourth. Yeah, I've done all of them, yeah, yeah. And um, I'm, and I miss I missed the middle two. I did the first and I did the last one. Missed the yeah. middle two. So I the whole seven breaths that he was talking yeah. about, I either forgot what he said about that on the first session, or he said it in the second and third because I didn't know what he was talking about. Yeah, well, seven. I mean, is it, 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 it just not a, as a by the by? Is Asai Sensei did? Is it seven breaths for Niju Shiho? Yeah, seven breaths for Niju Shiho. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically, it's it, it, you meditate, you breathe, you breathe in, and you hold the breath for a count of one. You breathe out through your nose. Breathe in, hold it for two, hold it for three, hold it to seven, and then you let go. So that that, that that's that. Okay. Exercise. It's like a mindfulness of breathing exercise yeah. as a standard for this thing, yeah. but it's it's based on seven breaths, and basically it's expanding the breath and learning to use your belly to breathe. Okay. Yeah. So that's Cause, cause really uh, thing, I yeah. thought. I thought that's what it was because he was talking about when you're making a like Renoji Dach or like a Shizentai or something, yeah. uh, Hachiji Dach, where you're kind of tensing everything to your tandem to your center and then yeah. relaxing. Like yeah, that tension and, then, and, then, and then, relaxing. And that's and how you how your body falls is being that neutral, that that emptiness of of kind of technique, that letting go of stuff. Which uh, you know, I was teaching yesterday down in Abbeyfield. Uh, for the first time in a long time, I did a seminar. And I was talking yesterday about about kind of like how we should just like try to take effort away from our karate. Yeah, of, try to do minimalist karate in, in many ways. And I, and it kind of what what Rick Sensi was saying on on Wednesday was that sense of of you know you in order to let things go, you have to maybe th- figure out what everything is first. So by tensing everything and then letting it go you realise you've let it go rather than just figuring out that you've let it go because you, you might have missed a few things. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's exactly... I mean, that, that, that's the Zen of it. That's the Zen Cohen of it. In yeah. order to let things go, you've got to hang on to them. Mm. So you, you hang on to your breath and then you let it go. Yeah. So, again, the same thing he was talking about. You know, like, remember you do that uh, Asai Kata Kiho Ken? It's yeah. The whole, I think it's yeah. the same sort of principle, which is like a Buddhist Taoist thing, is to hold it. you really got to... You can't... And then let it go. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, his classes are really profound, and, and like everything in Zen, it's really hard to talk about. Yeah, I think once you talk about it, you kind of, you know, it's beyond words, really. Absolutely, yeah. You know, I, I think the two two things that like you can get from that is is yeah, it's firstly like the, the moment that you start talking about it or trying to analyze it, it disappears. It's like yeah, very um, kind of. Uh, yeah, it Well, I mean, to be the other thing is what I've done, what I always try and what I've always done with karate, you do is take it home with me. Hmm. So, um, Rick always gives us homework, and is this one was doing kata one move at a time, very slowly with your eyes closed. Yeah. So I, I did this on um, on Friday, and it was really, really interesting. Really, and I was take your shoulder, and it wasn't too bad because you just, yeah. you know you find your stance. That was okay. I did it with taking knee down. Uh-huh. As soon as I did this, I fell over this way. And because maybe taking Edan's a neglected kata with me, it's one of the, you know, I've done, I've done Edan Shodan Basai Dai loads of times. I found it fascinating and really uncomfortable. And, really? Yeah, really, you know, really good. I mean, I think it's a good training mechanism. A, to, you know, to, you know, in, um, in Tai Chi and Sing Yi, they do a it's called shanty where you hold a position, holding the post, hmm. and I'll hold it like for an hour. And seeing you do this posture, you hold the posture, and you gaze, you gaze at the fingers, you know, and you, it's like a, it's like a, it's a, it's a standing form. So I mean, it was a version of doing that really, but with your eyes closed, it, it, it was excellent. I mean, you know, there's a, yeah, do it. I, I'd recommend doing it. Yeah. And I did it with my black belts, and they really enjoyed it as well. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I think with Rick Sensei, we've got a like. It's a great asset to the group. You know, he talks about turning the other wheel. Yeah. This is a big thing with, with me, you know, because it's a bit like, you know, he, he talked about some, I don't know, other, other senseis he came, grew up with who were really good. And, and he says they're falling to bits. And, you know, Rick is falling to bits, but he's turning the other wheel. Yeah, yeah. And he's doing, he's doing an internal creative, which, which is fantastic. I mean, like, it's, it's it, it very does, hard to talk about. Yeah, and it, but he does add that, that element that really tries to kind of move the group, the community into a much more holistic community. 
But yeah. also, yeah, we've embraced it as a group and proud yeah. of it. Yeah, for sure. Also, you know, Rick said to me he was thinking about retiring. Yeah. He's 70 this year. He goes, I was going to retire, but I can't now. And I think that's a good two-way process. Yeah. Because, you know, he, he's met us and, you know, we've you know, inspired him to keep going. Yeah. And, you know, we've met him and, you know, we get an awful lot out of it. Yeah, for sure, yeah, for sure. So it's good. Yeah. Can I lead on to the next question then? Okay, go on. This is from um, Paul Oren Sensei. He okay. says, um, yeah, where do you see, what's your five-year plan? Where do you see the HDPI going? And how can you make it a sustainable group which it can exist without you? That's, that sounds like definitely like Paul Oren's. Yeah, it is. Well, it's, plan. it's a much longer question, but I've managed to simplify it using my Zen training. Okay. Um, my five-year plan is... Well, yeah, is to is to make it sustainable. So I think sustainability, I think, is um, is is not easily done, but certainly like we're we're on the way to doing it. So like the the dojo in Dublin, I think, is key to it. So you know, we're we're a big dojo. We've got uh, probably seven hundred members. Well, we've got five hundred members that are regular members, and then we do after school programs, which. Um, which are probably another 200, 250 members. So we were, we're a good 700, maybe even 750 members, which uh, is the, 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 the dojo is kind of, well, it doesn't make a profit. Let's put it that way. Uh, <laughs> it kind of breaks the even at best. And, and the reason why is because, because our, our wages, uh, our wages are quite high because uh, the, the, the instructors get a full-time salary for doing basically a part-time job. But what that does mean, and I'm quite happy for that, because what that does mean is that we do have a strong group of uh, young instructors that are training full time, teaching, you know, between 16 and 20 hours a week, but training at least 10 hours a week, maybe maybe a little bit more. Um, and that produces uh, the next generation of instructor. So, yeah. so my plan is that, you know, these, these instructors will trickle through not as fast as it would have happened in or that it does happen in japan um because well for various reasons but it doesn't happen as, as, as quick as it does in japan where you're getting maybe a graduate of the insurance course every year or, yeah, but in, you know, in japan they have that university system which is yeah unique yeah in the world. absolutely and, and it's government sponsored also is essentially takudai and kyo yeah uh, no no uh, 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 take yeah that's it really yeah you know and occasionally some will come from somewhere else yeah. So that's a uniquely Japanese thing. But I mean, yeah. I think what you have there, I mean, I, I love those. I'm very impressed by everyone down there. And you got the, you know, you got, is it Caitlin? And then you get, they've got quite, you got like yeah. late teenagers, aren't they? Yeah, Caitlin and Carl, um, like two and two, well, uh, Carl's just, uh, just turning 18, Caitlin's just turning 16. But like yeah. they, they're, you know, made it very clear what they want to do. They want to kind of uh, teach full time. So, you know, uh, like hopefully that will happen and if, and if it doesn't like you know I, i'd be very happy for that to happen but if they choose to do something else then you know there's always other instructors that are or other junior instructors who yeah, but also you know what what you have again which is unique is this you know is this internship program so you know we've had people from around the world come and what they, yeah. i mean they tell people what, what, what that is so yeah so the internship program is well you know it's it's like a month-long training program uh well, it's not a training program. I, I want to really get away from the sense that it's an instructor's course type, type, type thing because I think that's is is a little bit kind of uh, false advertising. And it's, only, it's only a month. You can't you can't yeah. have it. It's a month. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like no matter how hard a course is, anyone can survive a month. Yeah. And get through it, uh, but it's that's not long enough to have any changing effect on yeah. anyone's technique at all. So yeah. um, so. So the, the internship is, is exactly that. They come along and they get experience and they get ideas and they get information that they then can go on and do whatever they want with it. They might ignore it uh, and that's fine because they don't get a qualification from it. But, or they might take it on board and really run with it and continue to kind of train and develop in the same way that we do in the dojo uh, and that will like, last them a lifetime and it will have a, a significant difference. So, um, yeah, the internship, they come along for a month. They stay in the dojo for free. The training is for free. Uh, they get the, they get a hundred euro a week. So they get 400 euros uh, in the month to, to help with their, um, their food. 
uh, and basically that they're looked after. I mean, like they don't really, they, they don't really need for much uh, beyond that 400 euro. I mean, they're Remember, also looked after in a way that they're told very firmly they have, they can't miss sessions and they have to train hard. Don't they? Yeah. So, so they're training uh, both in the morning sessions and, and the evening sessions and they're helping out like a couple of the kids classes a, a day. So, they have like Sundays off and, and uh, like Fridays are kind of e easy, but so but Monday to Thursday and Saturdays they're fairly tough, tough going. I mean, well, um, you know, they, they, I mean, there is a famous case of somebody who did a day and went home, didn't they? Yeah. No, but, but, you know, just to try and put it into context, so it's not, you know, it's not all airy fairy. It's just a month of hard training, month of, and then you teach classes, don't you, as well? So you, you get experience yeah. teaching, and like your graduation is you teach a class to the humble dojo. Yeah. So the the you last day. Thing, you know, it's yeah, the, the, thing to do that. Like the last day that they, they teach my class, uh, yeah. whilst I watch them, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, but yeah, yeah, like, and um, they, they, you know, like so far, I think we've had like a dozen or so people do it over the last three yeah. years, and we got a couple more this, uh, this, uh, this autumn, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, yeah, they, they like it's, it's, it's that's part of the plan of that sustainability where we're basically what they're taking the ideas and the philosophy that we have in the Hombu Dojo and they are then transporting that around the world. So we've had, you know, people in North America and across Europe and subcontinent do it. And so hopefully, hopefully it might, you know, eventually kind of uh, start to plant the seeds around the world. So that's yeah, another I mean, way of, yeah. of being sustainable, I think. Yeah, I mean, my answer to Paul would be, um, you know, Rick, Rick, Rick Jackson Sensei found us, yeah. and you know, if, if kind of if you build it, it will come. So mm. you know, we, we, we again creating opportunities and you know, try and do quality karate or do quality karate, and then have a nurturing approach to people. So hopefully, you know, as time goes by, you know, who knows who's going to turn up? Yeah. On, yeah. On, Although I would say that Rick, Rick's. Rick Jackson says he didn't so much find us that we found him. <laughs> like, yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. We, get, I think we get, well, I, I personally say well, I we get more. Yeah. No, we, we did find Yeah, yeah. but uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an equal and fair relationship between us. But, but I mean, I think what, what I'm trying to say, without naming names, we all know big karate organisations who basically have the same people in power hmm. until they die. You know, yeah. it's like a dictatorship thing. Yeah. And, Lots of um, loads of talented people had nowhere to go in that group. Yeah, yeah. I, I th so like to an to answer Paul's uh, uh, question, like in, in where do I see myself in five years? Well, you know, in five years' time, I will be fifty-two, young. Uh, but like, I think I think in like towards my mid fifties, I really want to do start taking a step back. Yeah, uh, and I, I don't mean that in terms of. I won't teach anymore, but but I think it does mean that I, I won't want to have the involvement in the in the running of the dojo, the Humber dojo, as much as I do. And I don't think I will want to be teaching, you know, every weekend like like I normally do uh, yeah. outside the pandemic. So you know, I, I like maybe I'll go to a part time kind of you know teaching part time teaching uh, or you know teaching every other weekend that type of thing. And I think. Yeah. That then that's still like I'm still kind of kind of in charge so to speak. But what I am doing is I'm like giving other people plenty of chance to kind of rise up. Oh, you um, are, yeah, 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 and to to find their place as well. And then maybe ten years after that, when I'm sixty five, uh, then it would have been a decade of of the younger people kind of coming through, and and you know the people who are kind of in the thirties or forties now, uh, like the thirties maybe now who are then in the, maybe in the, the 50s, and go, right, okay, now it's only, you, it's, you're making all the decisions. Or, and whether that might be one person, because that's the obvious choice, or maybe that's going to be a couple of people, or maybe it's going to be a committee, who knows? But uh, that will be decided by the group as a whole, not by Yeah, me. I mean, I think in the grand scheme of things, there'll be a natural leader. Mm. Like, you know, we, we, again, I don't know, I don't care anymore, you know, the natural leader of the JKA, it seems to me, in Japan is Naka Sensei. Yeah. Seems a natural, I hope that, you know, I don't well, yeah, that's the natural thing to do, you know. Yeah. But, um, you know, but it, it probably won't be because it'd be somebody else who's like, a, you know, 92 will take over. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I, 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 I agree. I, I think, though, that, you know, like in, um, in, like, you spend your, 
Well, you certainly spend your, like, well, up to your 20s, it's kind of about learning, isn't it? And then in your 30s and 40s, it's, you know, you're, you're kind of really building and, and developing. And I think people in the 30s and 40s, they're going to build things and kind of uh, like really try to, uh, to kind of try to, you know, create a, a, a position for themselves in their lives. And then in the 50s and 60s, they kind of enjoy that and kind of uh, kind of restart or kind of make, confirm that. And then the 60s, the wherever, then they kind of... I don't know what they do in the 60s. Yeah, retire. Well, enjoy, you know, enjoy it. So I th- ah. but I th- the point is, is that you have lots of innovative, strong, good ideas in your 30s and 40s. Yeah. And I think maybe... You're in your prime. Say it. You're in your prime. Yeah, you're in your prime. And I think, but not only physically, but I think also mentally and, and also just open to new ideas and new possibilities. Yeah. But by the time you get into your 50s, it's like, oh, well, I don't know, I'm presuming. But, but like, it's like, well, you know, I, I, you don't want to, you don't want to push anymore. You don't want to, you want to no, just that's enjoy Trump and Joe Biden. Yeah. But, but my point is, is that like, I think anybody should, who, who is kind of pushing a group like the HDK forward needs to have the energy have the drive, have the, the understanding and the wisdom of, of needing to listen to other people and, and understanding the, the strengths and weaknesses. Uh, but also that age bracket of maybe 40s and 50s is great. Yeah. Maybe 40s, maybe 50, 40s for sure, late 30s maybe, early 50s maybe. But then after that, it's like, give someone else a chance. I, t- I totally agree. Yeah, totally yeah. agree. You yeah. mean I'm not going to be the boss? Sorry, mate. You're, uh, you're. <laughs> I don't want to be the bus. <laughs> you're sixty, don't you know? I know. Well, you know, Mugabe was ninety-two when they got rid of him in uh, Zimbabwe. You're gonna have to add that little moustache. Hey, uh, and you know, Joe Biden, God love him, is, is he seventy-eight? He is, yeah. I mean, I don't know what to get into American politics, but but like, he's he's much more going to be a caretaker pr- uh, president, right? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. He's already. Yeah, that's that's that, I, I, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's basically implied he's going to do one term and then it'll be. Kamala Harris. Anyway, yeah. 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 Next question. Next question. Uh, is it my turn? Is it? Um, I um. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah. I asked you five year plan for already. It's your turn. Okay. Uh, my next question then is um, okay. So we were talking about it uh, recently. So uh, your your. Uh, Due to grade, shortly. Really? So, well, next spring, six months ish, seven months ish. That's when you're due. So, <laughs> so you know, I hate these questions. Excellent. That's why I think I'm going to oh. fill your answer. You want the yeah, All right, yeah, go on. So, what are your thoughts? What are your plans? What are you think? I hate grading. I hate the grading system. I hate the whole thing. It's. I don't think I'm very good at karate, and it's it's very hard for me. Well, nobody nobody thinks that they're good. Well, actually, I was going to say nobody thinks they're good at karate. That's not true. There's a lot of people who aren't good at karate who <laughs> think they're good at karate. But um, you know, that's the part of the course for someone who's a little bit more self-aware. So, but I, I think it's important. It's important. Okay. All right, go on. You, 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 tell, you say what you say, and then I'll try and give a reasonable answer. Okay, so I think, because all I want to know is what your thoughts were, but I think that as seniors within a group who do expect people to perform and do gradings and, you know, be open to criticism and, and take part of the journey, um, I, I think that uh, then we have to do that as well. So, um, you know, I took my, I did my sixth dan. Uh, with Kagawa Sensei in front of every single senior within the JKS GP in Ireland at the time, uh, you know, and and I think there's a, you know, well, certainly within the 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 uh, the HTKI seventh and eighth dan is honorary anyway, so like most other organisations, so sixth dan is the last kind of physical grading, but I do think like it should be the last hurrah, the last kind of like yeah, I've still got it. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> Well, you know, I think you, I think you still do. You're, you're as fit as a butcher's dog. You've just been for a 90-minute run. Yeah, I am fit. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, you're right. You are totally right. And it's just, um, well, can I be totally honest now? I'm worried I'll mess it up. Um, 
deep down, I don't um, never ever, you know, my, my first license went up to third down, AGB license. Mm. I got first, second, and third down with Noida SMT. And I can say, hand on heart, I was proud of all those gradings. And I think I deserved it. And for me, that was kind of it, really. Yeah. You know, until I met you. And uh, yeah, you, you are completely right. And I just have a, a ridiculously high standard for six down and a slight, slight um, respect for Funakoshi's foot down ideal. But as an HDKI member, I, I'm not going to use that as a as an excuse and I'll embrace HDPI stuff. But um yeah. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So what cutter are you gonna do? What am I gonna do? I don't know. No, I because I'm rubbish at cutter. <laughs> I cha I trained with you last time I trained with you, I hadn't been in a dojo for since March. Yeah. And I'm sure you had I'm sure everyone, everyone will know this. You know when you've been training in a in the kitchen? Or yeah. in a in the in the in a park, when you put your dojo on and then suddenly you're back in the dojo, I just felt terrible. Oh really? Well, yeah, completely rubbish. Just you know, back to all the old bad habits that I normally have. Yeah. And I think I think lots of people will have had that because you, you know just getting that getting that sort of feeling of being back in the dojo. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. You know me. You know. Well, you got, I mean, you got six months, six months, eight months to. Uh... To kind of you know to get back into the habit all right sensei okay my problem with with gradings is that you know they, they only work within association don't they? i mean i'm the guy who's famously who's, you know uh, hacked off lots of people who you know who wanted to do i don't know fifth and sixth down and i just told him well you're not good enough and then they've left <laughs> so you know I'm, I'm not very good for the group really well, no, there's the, the, there's the, the times that you've done that, it's been important and needed. But, yeah. you know, I think when you are good enough, then, you, you, you know, you should do it. And I mean, I, I, I understand as well, like, there's so, it, it is only with in-house. You know, like, my, always my kind of go-to, um, my go-to kind of uh, story is about Nakayama Sensei, and, and he went from third dan to, uh, to, Eighth dan in in a decade or twelve years, I think. Well, he 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 went from fifth dan to eighth dan with nothing in between. Yeah, but he like he, he came back from Manchuria as sand dan. Then he, within within five years he was he was scored yeah. and then five yeah. years he was hatched on. So yeah. you know, <laughs> excuse me. Um, so completely in house, and then then that in house kind of grading then became a world standard. <laughs> you know, yeah. like it became the gold standard type thing. So yeah. so you know, I think. I think um, I think although it is only in house, it does set a precedent of of what a so say if you're graded and 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 passed and everything, then that sets a precedent of of what HDK six down is. Just like Paul. No, Oren. I agree with that. Like you know, Paul Oren sensei six down, yeah. and I think yeah. he's a, and then when Chrissy Howard did a fourth down a while ago, yeah. I thought great grading. That's yeah. the benchmark, and it makes my life easier because I can say, "Oh, you're as good as Chrissy." Yeah, he's going to Paul. I mean, remember that fifth dan grading with uh, Jason, uh, Tommy, Tommy, and Justin Beatty? Yeah, that was a great grading. Yeah, that was one of the yeah. best fifth dan grades I've ever seen. Yeah, each one had a quality to it. It was just yeah, cool. yeah. And I remember, you know, um, when when Paul Oren took his sixth dan, he said to me, he came to me and said, oh, this is like before the grade," and he said, "Like well before the grading." And he said, uh, he says, Scott, he says, I'm, I'm not asking you for, I'm not asking your opinion, um, your permission. He says, yeah. uh, he says, but I'm kind of asking, uh, what you think, uh, about me doing my sixth down. He says, I think I'm ready and I, and I want to take my sixth down. And I thought like, there was no hint. I, I, I kind of, I think I'm doing him a little, yeah. yeah, I think I'm doing a little bit of disservice for him because it wasn't quite put that way, but it was put in such a way where, he was saying, I'm confident and I'm ready and I know I'm ready, uh, but I am, I am also mindful of uh, like the need to kind of protocol and some of that. And whichever way he put it so well, I thought, well, you're, you're sick down already. 
Like it's such a perfect thing to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, and, yeah. and equally, it, it, although the absolute opposite of him is like what you're saying, which is like, I don't want to, I, no, I don't want to grade. Or like, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Well, yeah, okay. That's why I'm going to force you to grade. Well, you know, <laughs> when you got your seventh, Dan, <laughs> it was it Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> you got your seventh done. How seventh done? <laughs> well, you know, you said the first thing you said. Oh, it doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> I just can I? No, I didn't say that. I, I didn't say <laughs> that, and it's on tape, so I know I didn't say that. I said gradings don't mean anything to me. Yeah, but. The fact that I've received it from the group means everything to me. Ratings don't mean anything to me, but the fact that you have suggested I do six down means everything to me. Sorry, that's that's too cliched. All right. That, that you're just stealing my line. Where, where's the shoe how re in that? Oh sorry. <laughs> Could I do before that again then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, let's not repeat your fourth that nerve. Oh no, that was a nightmare as well. <laughs> That's a story for another time, not on this forum. Okay, okay, next question then. Do you have another question? Well, um, this, oh, hang on. Yeah, okay, so this is a question from Steve Bales. Hang on, hang on. Question, before, you, uh, before you ask the question, before yeah. you ask the question, um, I, have, uh, I have one small issue. What? I, I've run out of my drink. So right, don't get your drink. Do you want to put, yeah. like, pause? I'm going to pause. Yeah. As if by magic. The glass is back and filled. Hooray! Cheers. Cheers. Okay, next question then. Ah, okay. Um, from Steve Bale, Sensei. And this is actually, timing is very important in karate. Steve has two questions. The first question is rather flippant, but apposite to this conversation. He says, Scott Sensei, can you recommend a good bottle of red wine? That <laughs> worked out well, didn't it? Honestly, because that wasn't planned. Yeah. When you think in red wine, you slightly let it down, but still. I'll, I'll tell them I'll give them a, 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 a good suggestion in the autumn when I start drinking red wine again. Okay, then. All right. So, I, I, because I think we're running out of time, I'm going to tie his question to. Uh, yeah. So, his question is um, uh, What has been the most challenging uh, technique that you've had to study or work on? And, and where do you see your karate? going now does that make sense yeah i, I mean uh, i've written it down but i'm paraphrasing it but basically okay. he wants to know your most challenging technique and what's the state of your karate now and where will it be in the future okay well so uh, the most challenging technique like that's you know my immediate response to that is there's no such thing as technique uh, <laughs> um, um and so, yeah, it's difficult. So, like, so that's where my mind is at the moment. That there's no such thing as technique. There's only just a uh, body intelligence. You see, now uh, you're going back. Now you're going back to what Rick said. There's no such thing as anything. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, so, so okay. So, most challenging technique, I guess, back in the day, maybe I don't know. You sure, Gary? Like, if I if I give a kind of bog standard, it's not a bog standard answer, but if I give an answer that is probably uh, fairly, uh, it was certainly not unique, and a lot of people have struggled with maybe the, the Ushiri Gary, but but like the reason why that's difficult and and maybe difficult, or maybe like like uh, Kokut Stach wasn't difficult for me, but the reason why a lot of people have difficulty with Kokut Stach and maybe also Ushiri Gary is because it's the strength that you need that's required for the technique, which then just reinforces my my argument that there's no such thing as technique. There's just physical intelligence, which is a combination of of muscle control and muscle strength. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean my, my bugbear is, I mean, because, you know, I, I you know when we learn karate, my, my ambition is, I know, I can do every technique for better or worse. Yeah. There's nothing, there's nothing I can't do. Some of them is not very good, but I can, and I sometimes struggle with people go, oh, I can't do a rubber wash. And yeah. you go, well, learn how to do it then. Yeah. So See, I, I mean, this is Steve's question. So I, my, my, my answer is the same thing. Is like every technique's quite hard, but yeah. you know, we, we, we can all do it. I mean, like you know, I think that there's a great thing when you do more washiuki from like say Niji Shiho and then Unsu. Yeah. You know, you just, it's kind of 
Well, like you know, you, you're you know, you're you're much better than me at this. But like, you could work out the difference, can't? You? Yeah. So I think I think basically every technique can be challenging. Some are more challenging than others, but you need to just put the work in. Yeah. And I, I know my, my thing with people sometimes, you just you know, you can't give up on it. Yeah, I, I think also. You know, I always thought I could do Gakazuki until I went and started training with Steve. Yeah, you sent me that great message you were training with Steve Rubel. But this is a wonderful message. And you said, just train with Steve Rubel. A Gakazuki's all wrong, big smiley face. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I mean, so, so, yeah, I, I, I disagree with the premise of the question, Steve Bales, yeah. since they, sorry. I love the wine instead, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, I mean, I understand, I understand what you're saying, but, but I think, I think my answer then and the, my answer to the first question also answers the, the second question, which is where do I see my karate going? And like, that's where it's going. Like my, my karate is slowly disappearing. I used to, I used to do Shotokan karate. And then for a while I did karate and now I kind of do martial arts. And, I, and even that's kind of disappearing. Did you, you know, know did, you, did you know the ox herding pictures in Zen? No. I'll, po I'll post about it later on. Is yeah. the, the, there's this series of again because it became back. I mean, I used I no, I know I went to university and did comparative religion, but you no, know, Rick brought me back to Rick brought me back to Zen really, which I was quite yeah. dismissible. And the ox herding pictures basically starts off with no ox, picture of a boy riding an ox, blah 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 blah, and at the end the ox is gone, mm -hmm. and it's like that. You know, it's like a big, big nothingness again. Or you know, you, you, yeah. you, your belt starts as white, you get to black, and you go back to white again. And yeah. I, I think, you know, you're totally right. It's no technique. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. But Steve Uber's a bit like that, isn't he? I mean, he'll yeah. just do. Yeah, no, absolutely. absolutely yeah. And, um, and I think, like, I don't want to get too kind of up my own arse, but I think the stuff that I kind of think about and, and kind of almost realize can't be explained. And, and the moment that you do, you're, well, it disappears. It's like um, me trying to talk about Hong Po and neutralness. Yeah, yeah. Move, because it's, it has to be a direct experience, is a Zen yeah, thing. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Direct experience. And yeah. then once you've got the direct experience, you know what? You don't want to talk about it. Rick yeah. Jackson will say, you know, I don't want your money, I don't want anything. Yeah. He doesn't care. But Steve yeah. Google's the same, isn't it? Steve yeah, absolutely, yeah. likes to see you. Yeah. He's delighted that you're interested in doing it. Yeah. But, you know, he's genuinely not trying to sell you anything. And yeah. you know what? Um, you know, and then God love him. You know, when, when him and Rick Sensei go, you know, they're, 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 they're gone. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, there's no book. Yeah. Or there's no brand. You know, I don't know. Kanazawa Sensei, God love him, is a brand. Yeah. The, the brand, you know, the brand will not live on. Yeah. Which is kind of great. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So. So I mean, just so moving on from that, that question again, Steve. Steve mentioned this to me. I mean, how would you define HDPI karate? Um, I, I, I would, I would try everything not to define it really, because. I yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's my. That's a great answer. Yeah, like it's a bit like standardizing kata, isn't it? Like, I mean, I think I, the greatest example is Kanazawa Sensei was fantastic. Got chucked out the JKA. Yeah, because a great history people chucked out, and he basically rebranded his own karate. Yeah. So he basically did, did a new yoi, made some changes in the kata, and became yeah. this is my brand. And he did all them kumite one two three stuff, you know, which is fine. And he's brand, and that is people follow that slavishly. Yeah. And as our karate, KGB have KGB karate, immutable, unchanging. Yeah. But I, I would argue that then it's. Um... It's it's no longer art. It's, yeah. it's sure. I mean, for sure, KUGB karate is martial, for oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but and, and I'm sure there are martial artists within the KUGB. I don't want to give them a disservice either. No, but uh, there's loads of it. Because I mean, there's loads. I mean, there's loads of great karate in SK, SKI, and K. Yeah. No, brilliant yeah. karate. But, it's, but, I mean, it's it's more an organisational thing. You know, yeah. it's, like, you know, it's like like religion. There's dogma of the Catholic Church. That do it's dogma, isn't it? You know. Yeah. So, like, if I was going to define the K of uh, the HDKI as anything, I, I think I would like to uh, to to characterize it as as uh, as artistic in in the sense that it's constantly evolving. 
And I, I don't, I don't want it to kind of, if, I, if you even by saying that, then you take away from the martial aspect of it. Oh, just a bunch of kind of artistic kind of like posing, blah, blah, blah. No, I don't mean that at all. I, I, what I mean is that, is that we are not set that, yeah. um, like, you know, I, I will define it by Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance. <laughs> Yeah, has, we come back to it. Yeah, everyone has an innate ability to recognize quality. Yeah. So it's quality. And sometimes that's quality because of the way that we kick and punch. And sometimes it's quality by the way that we uh, organize uh, seminars. Sometimes it's quality by the way that we deal with people in a, in, a, in, a, in a kind and generous way. Sometimes it's quality by the fact that we provide opportunity. But most of all, I think it, it's, it's quality because it gives practitioners a chance to find their full potential. There, there is a caveat to that, though, in a way that some people like, are blinded by flashiness. Yeah. Oh, I mean, and that's a very human quality. You know, it's a bit like, you know, you, you can see a car and it's got like go faster stripes on and a number. Yeah. I think, you know, we talked about your Lotus, didn't I? I said, just stick a thing on. So yeah. there's still. Like, you know, I think some people can't, you know, smell the coffee. Yeah. Well, and, and also... You some... can't really mature, but I mean, a lot of people would like, oh, I'll do, I don't know, I'll do Taekwondo because I've got great big high kicks. Yeah. You know, I won't do Shotokan because it's boring. Yeah. But, and some people, though, are, are, um, are attracted by dictators and dictatorship. Yes. That it's very comforting. They become institutionalized. So, so like this half of me, half of me thinks that you know I think the HDKI will do well because we're growing in a sustainable way. We're not losing members. We're gaining members. We're yeah. doing it in a nice, consistent way. So that's fine. Half of me thinks we will plateau because most people will feel very uncomfortable in being in a group like this. Because, well, yeah, because it, it's, a, it's a road less travel. Yeah. I mean, okay. I, I was teaching, like, you know, it's Paul, Paul and John, who have, like, you know, done credit for years. We did Jitte, and they, they'd learned Jitte, like me, about four or five different ways. Yeah. And, and, and then and I said to them, I said, well, you know, to do it the way you want to do it. Yeah. And if you can, if you can give me a good explanation for, for the bunkai, do yeah. it like that. Yeah. And, you know, and it's a bit like, ooh. We, we want a definitive answer. Well, no, because yeah. like in 1974, we did it like this. And yeah. what, 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 what's happening here? Yeah. So, yeah. so I, I don't know. I mean, the, the future is uncertain. But what I will say, though, is that, is that I, I also have like the, the like undying belief that people, given the right circumstances, will do the right thing and want to flourish and find their way in a, in a healthy way. So I think give people the right environment, give them the support, kind of ease their insecurities, yeah. like nurture them, then they will grow and they will find their own way and, yeah. and they will be able to find their own way within the HDKI. So half of me thinks that the HDKI will grow and grow and grow because, because, um, because we, we will nurture and provide opportunity and half of me thinks that's too much for people and that they will flee to the hills and and kind of you know hunker down in the more draconian dictatorships that, that are out there oh, oh they'll just you know award themselves fifth and sixth dance and be kings of the little kingdom i mean i've <laughs> mellowed over the years and i kind of it's it, this, 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 this way if you want to do it do it yeah. if you don't you don't you know but, but one thing that I would say, though, is that, is that like, the, the, I think what will happen is that the border of what is HDKI and what isn't HDKI will continue to become fuzzy. Yeah. So, uh, like, I yeah, think... Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I, I think with, like, any community, there are people who are wholeheartedly within that community. And they are 100%, like, you know, I'm... 100% Liverpudlian, and I live and die Liverpudlian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, reds all the way, that type of thing, you know? Or there's people like, you know, you and me who are Liverpudlian at one point. At, at, you know, at, at one part of us are Liverpudlian. The other part of us is, uh, is British. 
uh, you know, I've just applied for my Irish citizenship. You well, think yeah, yeah, you too. So like, so there's layer upon layer upon layer. We're not black and white, you know. Say again. I mean, we're not black and white. I mean, yeah, yeah. when I joined, when I left the KGB JKA to join you, it was a big thing for me. Yeah. Because I've yeah, defined sure. myself, you know, by, by that group. Yeah. So and I've never had any problems with at all. You know, never yeah. had it. I was very happy with it. So, so but my point is, is that like, I'm sure, and we can see it now already, there are like HDK people, and then uh, there's HD, like dojos and, and, and members within the HDK, and then there's, then there's also HDK friendly people. Yeah. Who are associated well, yeah, we, with I mean, HDK. We, we've got these HDK friends who are yeah. our friends who are yeah. trying to change their organization. Yeah. Uh, and then and then there'll be kind of HDK friendly people who maybe one day will join the HDK, maybe won't, but will always be welcome to what we do. So I, I see that as being like the the middle way, the middle way of of like not draconian, where you have to kind of you know follow the rules or you're out, and not the wild west where you just award yourself seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, wherever done, and and who cares. But there's there's a middle way there, and I, and, I th and I hope that the the HDK is, is one of I'm sure a number of organisations that will fulfil that role. I think the best thing that we've got is you can't you can't buy anything. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I do remember ages ago someone rang me up and they wanted to join, and they said, "I'll join if you bung me a fifth down." How much? <laughs> and, and he was a nice guy, and yeah. I said, "Well." Uh, well I, didn't know, I didn't know what to say. I said, "I can't bung you a fifth down." <laughs> and he was a very, very nice guy. Yeah. And he just, that's the world he came from. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. And also, like, 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 you know, I was, I was, I was deeply honoured to get my seventh done from the HDKI. Deeply honoured. Uh, well, but, like, but, but, but the other point of view is, we might, someone who's a Can I finish my story? Sorry, go on, go on. <laughs> you like <laughs> I was deeply honoured to get my seventh dan from the HDK. But last year, I was like two different group, one uh, group in Jap uh, like instructor in Japan, and then also instructor in Europe, like um, who said, oh, I'll, "I'll give you your seventh dan. It's all right." And I was like, "No, no, I don't know. Thank you very much, but that's not what's going to happen." Um, and and so, yeah, I, I think. Uh, like just joining a group to get bunged a fifth dan or, or whatever grade or or just uh, going elsewhere to get a grade uh when you've you know you've 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 kind of uh, anchored yourself to one organization i think is uh is a little bit kind of well i think it's noble. also interesting that some people you know they have their own organization and they get their grade off someone else who's not in the organization yes so yes like you know having no confidence in your own organization that that is really weird, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. I think the the kind of like the the Sheehan kind of awarding bodies. I think, um, uh, I like, yeah, I don't quite understand that. No, but I mean, lots of people we know who are very good at karate have all have all paid yeah. the money. Just, I mean, yeah. my other the, the antithesis antithesis of this is a one of our fourth dans rang me up <laughs> and he goes, "Oh, just you know, I'm doing I've done a grading." And one of my students, they were really, really good, and trained all the time, and I've double graded them to HQ. Is that all right? And I went, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't need to ring me up. You know, you are, you're a grading examiner, you're fourth down. If you think, you know, this nine-year-old is good enough, please don't ask me again. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the opposite yeah. one. Yeah. 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 Middle of the line, that's what you want. So, there you go. There yeah. You go. Okay. Well, listen. Um, unless you well, unless you got any more questions. Now should we call it a day on that? Well, there's there's, there's one thing we have to do because uh, Ross and Rue <laughs> have uh, like they they want to put uh, this on the the Humber Dojo podcast as well. I mean, I'll stick it on my YouTube channel, blah blah blah. But they also want to stick it on the Humber Dojo podcast. But they said that in order for us to, or for order for in order for them to allow us to do that. Uh, we must do fail of the week. So, our own personal week. Well, it doesn't have to. I don't think it necessarily because we're doing these every like two weeks or so, aren't we? So, like yeah. since the last podcast that we did, anyway. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you had a situation where you have personally failed in training? Yes. Oh, really? Yes. That doesn't surprise me. Go on. While it's fresh in my mind. 
So for the past, since uh, early June, I've been on a low carb, uh, very healthy, except when I'm seeing Scott Sensei, uh, uh, omega-3 healthy, low carb diet. You look wonderful, I, Simon Sensei. I do. I've, I've lost a stone and I'm really fit. And I've been running every day and I, I can, I'm, I'm doing really fit. And today I felt fed up. So today I got in my car, drove into town and I bought flapjack, big bar of Cadbury's chocolate and a bag of jelly babies. And I ate all of them. <laughs> and then I went for a run and I ran 90 minutes today and I ran it faster than I've ever run it before. <laughs> and I felt like a flying Superman. So it was a dietary fail, but um, an interesting phenomenon. But you're like sodding the head I was really grumpy this today. I, just, I felt grumpy well, because I ran two hours yesterday and I felt really tired and I've, I've just been, you know, I, I, I've not been eating enough and then sugar so that was my that was my my zen fail it was a failure or was it okay very sure. good uh, my my fail was um was like I, i'm just coming coming off a, like a, a really bad cold yeah and, you know i think i think colds and, and viruses in, in the time of covid are, are take on a whole different level don't they yeah and yeah so, so at six o'clock or like half five yesterday morning, I was checking my temperature to make sure I didn't have a, a temperature because I went and taught down in Abbeyfield, um, which is in uh, the in Kerry, the south south of Ireland, southwest of uh, Ireland, and uh, and and I got down and I'm blowing my nose constantly and it's running and I'm like, this is the first course I've done in six months. I need to do this course. Just yeah, for yeah. my own sanity, you know, and uh, and then and I was saying like, it's all right, it's all right. I don't have a temperature, and I, I'm. It's not. It's just a cold. And they're like, oh, I says, yeah, yeah, it's okay. And then then you know like when you know when you exercise, sometimes it kind of like, well, you cough like I do. Like when I'm training really hard, I'll cough. Yeah, I, I cough and spit up. <laughs> yeah, and so like I'm teaching and I'm putting all my effort into it. I'm already full of cold. And then I start coughing. And I'm like, oh God, they think I've got COVID. <laughs> they think I've got co I'm coughing and I'm sweating. And I'm like, <laughs> well, all I need to do is lose my taste and my sense of smell. And <laughs> yeah. they're gonna cart me off in hazmat suits. <laughs> so that that was my uh, that was my fail. Definitely fail. But I'm okay. I, it's just a cold, which incidentally is a coronavirus. Well, you, well, yes, on, on that bombshell. <laughs> okay. So, cheers. Uh, uh, Shirinji Kempo. Oh, Shirinji Kempo, yeah.